just in short, and I know you don't have a definitive answer on this, but why do you think it's been 11 years? Like, you know, you spoke about all of the different hurdles. You spoke about all of the different things that didn't add up. But 11 years to get justice? Just to get in the court, even if he's found guilty, just to get your day in court. Why do you think it's taken so long? And then secondly, and my last question, when is he going to court? Is there is there a date on the books? Can, can we expect to have some type of resolution to this injustice any time in the near future? Okay, to add your first first side of the question, there's a couple of reasons. One, he's American. Two, he's black. Three, it's the Caucasian family. They want answers. They want answers. It's the Caucasian family. It's a very lucrative Caucasian family in Namibia, Africa. They own quite a few restaurants. They are movers and shakers. So talking to a couple of African friends, they say, Barnes, it's, it's nothing for them to buy that time. You know what I'm saying? They can buy that time. They can get it held up that long. You know what I'm saying? Right now, I really feel like if they don't find my son guilty or if they don't find one of them guilty, they're back to square one. And it's really about what do we tell this family? What can we tell this family that we've been holding these people for 11 years and now we have to find them both innocent or whatever it might be? Are they happy with one person? Are they happy with two people? We don't know. But I know that it's all about the media down there. It was all about the big hype of Americans. It was all about them being white and black. It was all about them coming from Sweden to America and all of that hype. And that's why I think they held it up. I think it was good news, one. And the second, I think they didn't want to turn this family down. Like, this is what it is. This is what we have. And we see it in the media all the time. But now, because of our fight, there is people calling. You know what I'm saying? It's just that it's not moving. But there are, you know, and that's why I love my people. That's why I love my people, because it didn't take the big celebrities, man. It took the $5, the $3, the $7. The, the, the mothers hit me like, oh, my God, you such a great father, you know, and explaining everything that they've been through to the past. It takes all that because it's, it's, it's a couple of people I see hit the embassy on a daily basis in Namibia. This is not right. And these are the people that's making a difference. Because, yes, we are, in, we are going back to court. July 5th to July 9th, we'll be in court that week. And for the first time, we're in court two weeks right after that simultaneously. They didn't put it off to the next month. So hopefully the state arrests their case by the end of August. And then we'll be able to, the defense will be able to present their case. To present our case is only going to take us one week. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not on us to show our innocence. It's, it's really supposed to be on y'all to show up the guilt. You know what I'm saying? And through them trying to show the guilt, they've actually showed more innocence. If, if, if it's on a fair playground, it got to be fair. That judge can't have that pressure of being a white judge himself and looking at that white family and say, if I let this kid go, now we got somebody got to man up and say, we still got to talk to the family. We still got an open case. Now, that's where America and everybody plays a part because that can't be the reason you find this kid guilty. And right now, if they was to say, yo, we need a verdict right now, you have no DNA. You have no eyewitnesses. You have no witness at all. You have no motive at all. You have no weapon at all. What do you have that could really explain 11 years? I would tell my son right now, if they told you time served, take time served. I don't even care if you're innocent or guilty. Take it. You got 11 years in and come on home because I need you because each and every day I got to wake up in the morning and that first phone call, I got to look at. I got to look at because I don't know if that's the call. 
the one that I've been dreading because there's nothing I could do. You feel me? That's yeah. where we at with it. That's that's where that's the love. You, you that's one of the first questions. Where do it come from? That's where it comes from. That's my blood. That's my son. I brought him in this world. And it's like what your mother used to say. I'm be the only one to take you out. And that's all I can say on that, track. You know, Barnes, when, when I, I don't think it's anybody who's going to listen to this interview on podcast form, whether it's Spotify, iTunes, um, or any of the streaming services, or watch it on YouTube or, or the social media platforms that is not going to be able to, num- number one, feel your heart, feel your pain, understand that it is not just your child. Your child is there physically, but clearly you are all the way there with him spiritually. Mentally, it, 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 it comes through so clear every time you open your mouth. I, I should have asked you this, and I know I said the last question was the last question. Right. But if in the worst case scenario, he is found guilty, what is the maximum penalty? What is he looking at? Because he has 11 years in already. It almost feels like it would be time served at this point or he would have a couple more years to go. What, what yeah, do you that, think? That, that again depends on, like I said, it depends on the, the fairness. It depends on all that because he's done enough time for the minimum of a murder charge. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it depends on if they keep it a murder charge. You know, I really don't know if they could say, okay, it's a manslaughter. At this point in time, it's a murder charge. So that could go anywhere from the time that he has now up until life. Are we talking life with an L or 25 to life? Well, we talk, we talk about 25 to life. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay, so they, they operate... And I'm going to be honest with you. I would fight that, fight that, fight that, hope it didn't happen. But you know what that one thing would do? That would give me, while I'm fighting, one would be out of the jail. Because we all know when you're in the county jail, is where it's so crazy. The county jail is where people don't know the time that they have. They're not looking forward. They, they don't have no, no uh, touching visits or nothing else like that. So they have nothing to lose. So it's like being on Rikers Island in, 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 in war zone all this time that he's been there, rather than somebody getting their time and going upstate, quote unquote, getting comfortable and everything else like that. But more than anything, it would be something to look forward to. Right now, it's just no ending. It's just sitting there for 11 years. If a person got 15 years, Okay, now we know we got four more years we got to work with. And we got two more years we got to work with. That's a satisfaction to any parent in anything. You know, when your kid is just sitting there, okay, I know you got 15 years. Now your mother or your aunt got something to look forward to. Okay, so off of the 15, you might have to do 13. Okay, we got two more years, son. You know, they got something to look forward to. Right now, it's just you got my son, not only physically, but Anything can happen to him. And that's what I try to get people to understand. Like anything, he's been sad. He's been, this is stuff that he's been handling himself as a man. You know what I'm saying? It's, when you get in those type of situations in New York or in, in, in our jails, your family rushed to you. Your mother, like you just said, rushed to you. Your father, whoever, there's nobody to rush to him. Thank God, you know what I'm saying? A lot of be merciful that his girlfriend is there, so he's getting some type of form of love. You know what I'm saying? But all of these things play a factor in me doing what I'm doing. Corporate, everything plays a factor on me because it's like you can't preach and say that you love the people and you can't preach and be an activist and everything like that. And they're so busy picking and choosing what they want to stand up for, who they want to stand up for. And then say, no, I stand for the people. No, you stand for a certain person. 
or a certain people, but you don't say it for the people. And that's what I keep trying to bring all forward. This could have been to the forefront if we if we would have took a hold like you taking a hold of it and said we need to put this on the platform. This was supposed to be one of the biggest things that Obama talked about because at that time it was seven years. You know, Bond, and I know I know in a perfect world, and and I feel your pain, brother, and this is exactly why I felt an obligation. You know, when I reached out to you, I reached out to you in my words, I got to do my part. I have to do my part. And I know we talking about these different politicians and I pray to God that this video, this interview, this conversation goes viral and gets people to, or it gets to another platform that has a larger audience. And it gets to another platform that has a larger audience. But one thing you said earlier that I love, this thing been moving, not because of the politicians, but it's the people. It is the people. It's the everyday mom and dad. It is the son, the daughter, the person out there that feels your story, understands your pain. and says, let me give $3, $5, 50 cent, whatever I can afford to just help you in any way that I can. And God willing, this platform at least gets what you're going through out there to the masses. If anybody wanted to get in touch with you, if anybody wanted to donate, if anybody had resources or or a brother, a cousin, a husband or a wife to an elected official, a politician, somebody who can move the needle for you, where do they get in contact with you at? You can get in contact with me on social media. It's Rod, the real Roger Barnes. The real Roger Barnes. If you want to email me, it's rogerbarnesmarketing at gmail.com. If you want to call me, that's how real I keep it. It's 803-800-5903. That's my phone number. That's my email. That's my social media. Reach out. I, I take all phone calls. If you want to give to Justice for Kevin, the cash app is Justice for Kevin. Roderick Rowan. The PayPal is Roger Bonds Marketing at gmail.com. The Zelle is my phone number, 803-800-5903. Every, every, once a month, I'm at the bank once a month where I deposit the money, where I show the check, I show where it's going to Namibia. Every time I have a dinner fundraiser, then next morning I'm there at the bank, I'm showing you where it's going. I also put down the lawyer direct bank information and everything in case you feel like, okay, I don't want it to touch Barnes hands. You got all his swift code, you got everything else, it'll go directly to the lawyer. Like this is strictly Justice for Kevin. I, I want to make clear because your son spells his name K E V A N, not K E V I N. Right. K E V A N. K E V A N, and it'll be attached to Roderick Rowan. Unfortunately, there is people that have made cash apps with K E V I N. You know, that's how that's how corrupt people are trying to get people that was donating to Justice for Kevin. But this one is K-E-V-A-N, and it is say Roderick Rowan attached to it. Bonds, uh, it's a powerful story, but I'll end it the way I began. At the court is, and the reason I needed to get you on this program is because this is a story of a father's love for his child. And for anybody out there, as you always say, it's your child today, but it could be any of our children tomorrow. Whether you believe this boy is innocent, whether you believe he's guilty, whether you have no feelings about this at all, if you are a parent, you need to number one, share this story 
with your children, because it can happen to any of our children. You need to do your part and share what this man is going through. It can be something as simple as a repost on your social platform. It costs you nothing, nothing at all. But as parents, I think it's our obligation to jump in and do whatever we can do, whether it's donate a repost, tell a friend to tell a friend, write a local official, just get this story out there because it is criminal, criminal. They're charging his son with a crime, but what that government is doing to his son, having no due process in 11 years, that is what's criminal. Barnes, I salute you. I love what you're doing. I'm inspired by you. And just understand that I'm going to do my part. And for all of my listeners and my viewers, I'm asking you to do your part and let's get justice for Kevin. Barnes, thank you so much. You are a true power move maker. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.